It talks about the averages, variance and standard deviation. This is the last of those three sections. Um, so this one has measures of position. All right, so we're gonna be talking about these three things. All right, so you can just, you don't have to write this part right now because we're gonna get them individually. Um, but this is what we're talking about when we talk about measures of position. These tell us where a particular data value is in relation to the rest of the data set. Okay, it gives us the position of the data value. So we've got Z scores, we've got percentiles, which is the one I think we're probably familiar with, and then we have deciles and quartiles. So we're going to try to get through all three of those today. Let's see how it goes. All right, so where we need to be. All right, so we're going to start with Z score. Okay, so Z score comes with a formula. You want to jot the formula down. Um, it's a fairly easy formula to work with. The formula says that you're going to take the value um, minus the mean and divide by the standard deviation. All right, so Z score, when you find it, it's going to tell you how many standard deviations, either above or below the mean, you are with your particular value. So if you want to jot that last part down, you can. And then we'll look at an example. So I would definitely write the formula and then maybe that last sentence that tells you what it's going to do. An example and just kind of see how this goes. Um, like I said, this one is fairly easy to work with. All right, so um, I'll give you a minute and let you write this down if you want to. We're going to look at two tests. Um, you take a math test and an English test. Um, on the math test, you make a 62, and on the English test, you make a 75. And we're going to put a little bit more information out there, but the question is going to ask us in which class did we do better? So we're fairly conditioned to look at those two numbers. I'm watching your eyes. <laughs> I know, I'm watching it. I was, I was trying to find it because I knew that's what you were looking at. Okay. Um, sorry, I've not recorded it twice now for them to come get these things. Okay, so... Um, we're pretty conditioned to look at test scores like a 62 and a 75 and think that we did better in the class that we had the higher number on, right? Like we would look at that situation and say, of course we did better in the English class, right? Because we made a 72 match better than making a 62. But there are sometimes some conditions that might not make that true. So can you think of anything where it might not be the case where maybe you actually did better on the math test than the then the English test. So, my question is, how many places did it come in? 
Yeah, like how many questions there are, um, what, how many points it's out of, right? I mean, that would be the obvious thing, I think. Like if the math test was out of 65 points, then you did really well, right? Because you got 62 out of 65. And if the English test was out of 200 and you only got 75, then you didn't do so great. So that's that's one thing that could come into play there. All right, so the Z-score sort of brings some of those things to light and gives us an even ground to compare it with. Okay, so I'm going to put a little more information up here on this problem. All right, so let's say for the math test, the mean on this test, okay, so the class average on that test was a 58. And the standard deviation was 0 0.8. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of information about the average score, and remember standard deviation tells us how spread out the numbers are. Okay, so those numbers, because that standard deviation is small, we would expect that everybody did numbers, did scores around the mean. All right, and then on the English test, we'll say the mean of that test was a 70. And the standard deviation was three. Okay, so scores being a little bit more spread out in the English class than they were in the math class. All right, so when the question asks us in which class did we do better, it's really asking me in which class did I have a higher position. So let's go ahead and calculate a z-score for each one. All right, so for math, Remember our formula says that we're going to take the value minus the mean and divide by the standard deviation, okay? So the value is your particular score. So for the math, your score was a 62. That's going to go in for the value. All right, they told us the mean on that test was a 58. And the standard deviation was 0.8. All right, so I'm going to do that calculation. I'm going to subtract 62 and 58. That gives me 4. And then I'm going to divide it by 0 0.08. Or 0 0.8, sorry. Okay, and that gives me 5. Okay, so remember we said that the z-score tells us how far either above or below the mean we are in terms of standard deviations. So my score is above the mean because the z-score is positive. I mean, because the z, yeah, because the z-score is positive, my score is above the mean. All right, I knew that anyway because I can look up here and say, oh, I made a 62. The average was a 58. Yes, I'm above the mean. Okay, but if you come up with a negative z-score, it means that you're below the mean. So I know that because it's positive, I'm above the mean. And then the number tells me how many standard deviations. So this means that my score was five standard deviations. I'm just going to abbreviate standard deviations above the mean. which really is pretty good. I mean, to be five standard deviations above the average is pretty high. All right, so let's look at the other one and then we'll compare. So the other one is the English test. We'll put it up here. All right, so how do we set up the formula for the English? What are we gonna do? 75 minus 70. 75 minus 70 on the top. And then we're going to divide by three, right? Right, so that's going to be five over three. All right, so 1.67 is what you should get from your calculator. All right, so again, a positive number, which reinforces to me that yes, my score was above the mean. How far above? I was 1.67 standard deviations above the mean.
Okay, so now let's think about what is better. All right. Um, so if you take a test, um, we would all agree that we want to be above the mean, right? Above the class average. Okay. So if the class average is say here on a particular test. All right, let's say. Let's say that we'll just look at the math for a second. All right, so the mean was 58. That's the average. And you know you want to be above that. Do you want to be like a little bit above it or do you want to be a lot above it? What's that? A lot above it, right? I mean, if you're going to be above the average, you want to be as high above the average as possible. So do you want to be five standard deviations above or 1.67 standard deviations above? Which is better? The five, the five right? Because, because it is the highest standard deviations from the mean. All right, so I would say then that I did better in the math class because my position is higher in that class. All right, does that make sense? Anybody with a question? Those of you at home, anybody with a question? And I think we're going to have to operate just on the chat today because I don't think the audio is working for you guys. So if you've got a question, just put it in the chat for me. Okay, so that's your Z score idea. All right, so now we're going to move on and we'll look at the percentile, which is next. All right, so for percentiles, and this is a little more work. This is probably the hardest of the three. Um, we have two formulas that we're going to be using. So this is the first one. We're going to work a little bit with this one first. And what they did is they pretty much wrote it out in words for us. Okay, so they said that we can calculate a percentile by looking at the number of days below X. And then adding 0.5, and 0.5 is like a fixed value in that formula. It doesn't change from one problem to the next. And then dividing by the total number of values, and then multiplying by 100. Okay, now it's probably worth noting that when they say the number of values um, below X, what they're really talking about are the number of values that are less than X. Okay, so when they say below, they really mean the ones that are smaller or less than the one you're looking at. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. All right, so on this one, jot down your numbers. Um, so take a minute and kind of write these down, and then we'll look at the questions. All right, I don't necessarily know that you need the context above it. We'll just jot the formula up here so that we can look at it at the same time. Okay. All right. So the first question says find the percentile rate of a, of a temperature of 86 degrees. 
Okay, so we want to know among that data set, where is, what is the position of that 86 degrees in terms of percentiles? So the easiest thing for me to do, especially if especially if um, we have multiple questions on the same problem is to put the numbers in order. Okay, that just makes coming up with how many be less a little bit easier to deal with. All right, so I'm gonna do that first. It's not a huge data set. I'm gonna go through and just put these things in order. All right, so 78, I think is the lowest. And then I've got 80, um, 83, 84. Five, six, eighty-seven, and ninety. Okay, so that's going to make it a little bit easier to work with if I can put the numbers in order. All right, so we're looking for a percentile rate for eighty-six. Right, so this is the one we're looking at. And the formula wants to know, first of all, how many numbers are less than 86? So now I can just kind of count, right? And I can say, all right, one, two, three, four, five. There are five numbers that are less than the one we're looking at. All right, so I'm going to put a five in my formula first. And then we have that plus 0.5 on the top. And then total number of values. Okay, so I'm going to count all my numbers and I end up getting eight values all together, right? Okay, so I'm going to divide by eight. And then multiply by 100. So, let's see what we get. So you may want to, on your calculator, go ahead and do the 5 plus the 0.5. And kind of if you do that separately, then you can type it in just like we've got there without any parentheses. All right, so if you've got it done correctly, you're going to end up with... And percentiles only come in whole numbers, okay? Um, you don't have a percentile that is a 68.75. You have a 68th percentile, you have a 69th percentile, all right? But you don't have it in between, okay? And so we tend to just round this to the closest whole number. So sometimes we round down, sometimes we round up, but if it's 0.75, I would round it up. And so we would be looking at the 69th percentile. which essentially means that that 86 that we were looking at, at 69% of the values are less than that, and the other 31% are more than that. So it kind of gives you a position for this particular value in your data set. 69% of the numbers are less, 31% are more. Okay, so it tells you where that, is, that number is located. All right, so let me let you try the next one, okay? So you see if you can set up your formula for the second part of that. We're looking this time at the 80 and see if you can calculate your percentile for that. I'll give you just a minute to work on that one.
right, so for numbers less than 80, you put in what? One, good, so we started off with a one plus 0 0.5. And then there are still eight numbers altogether, right? And we're multiplying by 100. All right, so I'm going to do 1.5 divided by 8 times 100. And remember, we're going to round this to the nearest percentile. All right, so what do you guys get? 19, good. All right, so you get 18.7. And again, we're going to round to the nearest percentile. So that would be the 19th percentile. All right, so again, that tells you where the 80 is located. 19% of the values are less than that number. The other, what, um, what would that be? 81% are higher than that number. So it gives you the position of that particular value in the data set. All right, anybody have a question with that? Okay, so of the two formulas for percentile, that's the easier one to work with, all right? If you're finding the percentile. All right, so the other formula that we use with percentiles looks like this, all right? So this formula is used if we are given the percentile and we're trying to find the value. So I'm gonna write that down just so we can kind of keep that in mind. All right, so this is used if we are given the percentile. We need to find the data value. Right, so the formula itself is easier in terms of how it looks. Um, C times or C is equal to N times P over 100. Um, they tell you that N is the number of values, which it always is, and P is the percentile, which I think we would guess even if we weren't told that. P stands for percentile. What makes this difficult to work with is that this particular formula sort of splitters off into two different possible cases. And you have to decide which case you're looking at as you're working each problem. That tends to be the difficulty with this formula. So when we look at our example, leave on yourself a few lines in between, like you've written your formula down, leave about two or three lines underneath, because we're going to come back and add a little bit to this in just a minute. So let's go to our example. And like I said, we're going to come back to the formula in just a minute. All right. Um, I think this is the same problem. Um, yeah, same numbers. All right. So we're just kind of continuing. All right. So the first question on this one says find the temperature that corresponds to the 60th percentile. So again, if you want to jot your numbers down again, that's fine. Um, and then maybe the question.
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to point out to you is remember that we're going to use that C formula if we're given the percentile. All right, so right, we wrote that down. Um, if we're given the percentile, we're using this formula. And in this problem, we are given the percentile right here. Okay, so that's what makes it use that formula as opposed to the other one, first of all. Okay, so. Plug in for our formula first. Okay, so we're going to call this number one. And let's get up here. All right, so if they said n was the number of values, so what's going to go with n? Eight. All right, and then they said that p was the percentile that you had, so we're going to be putting in what? 60. All right, because they're wanting 60th percentile on this problem. And we're going to divide by 100. Okay, so this is pretty much what I would consider to be. Part of this formula, like typing those numbers, figuring out those two numbers and plugging in. All right, so 8 times 60 is 480. When I divide by 100, I'm going to get 4.8. Okay, so remember I said that it's difficult to work with this formula because it sort of splitters off into two possibilities. So the possibilities depend on what you get out for the C value, whether you get a decimal or you get a number that doesn't have a decimal. All right, so when I calculated the C here, um, I'm making a note, the answer is a decimal. C answer is a decimal. All right, so we're going to go back to our formula and we're going to make a note about what to do in that particular case. All right, if we come up with a decimal. All right, so I'm just going to stick it up here on this line that you left, write it down on those lines. So if C is a decimal, we're going to round up and use that position. So this is another scenario where we're not rounding on typical rounding rules, but we are rounding up in every case. So it doesn't matter what the decimal is, any decimal at all, you're going to round it up to the next whole number, and then we're going to use that position, and I'll show you what that means when we get back to the example. All right, so let's go back to our example. So that 4.8 that we got is going to round up to 5. It would have rounded up to 5 if it had been 4.1. Okay, it's going to round up every time. So this is going to round to 5. And then it says use that position. So what you're going to do is you're going to now go to your number, your list of numbers that are in order, and you're going to find the fifth number. Okay. So we're just going to count them out. This is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. My fifth number is going to be that we're going to find. It's going to be 85. Okay, so let me say that one more time. So um, the C is five because we round it up. And then we're going to count to the fifth number in the list. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. When we hit the fifth number, that's going to be my answer. All right, so the temperature that corresponds to the 60th percentile will be 85. All 
All right, are we okay with that? All right, so let's look at the other one then. All right, so find the temperature that corresponds to the 25th percentile. All right, so again, they're giving me the percentile, so I know that's the C formula that I want to use. All right, so how do I want to set it up? What goes in for the end? Eight. We have eight values. What goes in for the peak? Twenty-five. We have the twenty-fifth percentile that we're looking for, and we're over one hundred. Okay, so eight times twenty-five is two hundred. Divide by hundred, and we get two. So the answer is what we refer to as a whole number. It does not have the decimal at all. So that's our other case is what do we do if this C value turns out to be a whole number? So I'm going to go back. When you guys catch up on the writing, I'm going to go back to the formula and we're going to put that in. So the second scenario, write this down under your formula on the line that you skipped. If C is a whole number, we're going to go halfway between the C and the C plus one values. Okay, I know that's a little tricky, but we'll, we'll look at the example. It's not too bad. All right, halfway between the C and the C plus one values. So what that really means is we're going halfway between that one and the next one. C plus one would be the next value in the list. So let's go back to our example. All right, so our answer is our C value is two. So I'm going to go to my list and I'm going to find the second value, which is the 80. And I'm also going to look at the next one, All right? So we're going to go halfway between the second value because the C is two and the next one. So I'm somewhere between 80 and 83 as my halfway point. Um, if I get a situation, sometimes I can just look at it and tell what the middle point is, but if I can't, then I'm going to have to add those two numbers together and divide by two. Okay, so 80 and 83 make 163. And divide that by two gives me 81.5. All right, so that is my answer. 81.5 is the temperature that corresponds to the 25th percentile. Now, remember, and this is where it gets a little confusing. Remember, we said that the percentiles have to be whole numbers, which they are. That's like the 60 and the 25, but the actual data values do not. All right, so if it's 81.5, we're going to keep 81.5 on that data value. All right, anybody have a question? A chance to catch up on writing, anything you need to ask. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and deal with the dead cells and the quartiles real quick before we go. Um, they're going to work pretty much just like the percentiles did. Okay. Um, so what I want you to think about for just a second is we'll go back to this example that we just did for a minute is when I worded these questions um, here, there are lots of different percentiles that I could have chosen to put in those questions. Like I chose the 60th and the 25th, but I could have chosen like the 59th or the 58th or the 57th, right? Or the 26th or the 27th or the 28th. So there's a lot of different percentiles. Um, there are like 99 possible percentiles that I could pick. I could do the first percentile, the second percentile, the third percentile, all the way to the 99. And, and that's the case because the percentile basically takes your number line and cuts it into these units of one. You have a percentile every one unit. So when we start talking about quartiles, for example, the quartiles take that same number line But instead of dividing it into units of one for the percentiles, do you have a feeling for what it might divide it into? If it's called quartiles, what does that make you think of? Quarters, right. So the quartiles basically take your number line and cut it into these groups of 25, like a quarter, okay? So you're gonna have a Q1, quartile one. You're gonna have a quartile two and you're gonna have a quartile three. And that's gonna divide your number line into four sections, right? Do you agree with that? It's sometimes a little confusing that you only need three of them, but it cuts it into four sections. You've got a section here, two, three, four. So we've got four different sections for the quartile dividing the number line. And then for the deciles, That takes that same number line and divides it into groups of 10. Okay, it's the same number line and it cuts it into 10 groups. So we end up with nine different deciles. So we have D1, D2, D3, D4, and then the last one will be D9. So deciles and quartiles work the same way as the percentiles, it's just that it divides the number line a little differently. Now, the nice thing about it is that we don't have to learn how to do anything new because there's overlap between the percentiles, which we already know how to calculate, and the deciles and quartiles that we're about to work on. Okay. For example, if I'm looking at this one right here, that Q2 sits right in the middle of the number one. So what percentile would sit right in the middle of that same number line? 50, right. So what's going to happen is if they ask me to find Q2, I'm going to say to myself, well, that's the same thing as the 50th percentile. I know how to find a percentile. I'm going to do that instead of learning something new. And I'm going to fall back on what I already know. What about Q1? If they ask for Q1, what's that the same as in terms of a percentile? 25. So if they ask for Q1, I'm going to do the 25th percentile. And then if they ask for Q3, I'm going to do the 75th percentile. We do the same thing on the deciles. So like if they ask for D1, what percentile is that? 
Remember, it's cutting it into groups of 10. So each of those desk houses is a 10 unit percentile. So D1 is the 10th percentile. D2 is the 20th percentile. D3 is the 30th percentile, and so forth. Okay, so when you see a, a quartile or a decile problem, we're going to go back to what percentile is the same, and we're going to work that. All right, so real quick, let's take a look at an example and make sure that we can do this. All right, so we have a data set. Again, take a minute, copy your numbers down, and then we're going to do a couple of calculations if we can get both of them in real quick. At least one, we'll do at least one. Try to get these things in order for us. There. All right. Okay, so the first question says for us to find Q1. So we remember that if they're asking for Q1, that this is going to be the same as the 25th percentile. All right, so then we're going to take our formula and remember we have the percentile, so we're going to be using that C formula like we just did for the percentiles. All right, and we're going to put what in for the N? Put in the number of values, so. 12, there's 12 numbers. All right, what are we going to put in for the P? 25, because we're working on the 25th percentile. And we're going to divide by 100. So 12 times 25 is 300. Divide it out, we get three. So remember, whole number three. So that means that we go to our data set and we find the third number and the next one, and we go halfway in between. All right, so the third number is a 34. The fourth number is also a 34. So I mean, it would be 34, but you could add them together and divide by two if you wanted to. Right, so 34 would be your answer there. All right, real quick, I know I'm pushing time, but real quick, I'm going to do this last one, D7. This is the same as the 70th percentile. So I would do 12 values times 70 over 100. That's going to give me 8.4. Remember that if you get a decimal, you're always bumping it up, right? So this is going to bump to 9. And then you are finding the ninth value. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
the answer would be 67. 